Hi. Today I have here a very fascinating piece of equipment from the 1960s. It's a frequency counter, a digital equipment which is built purely out of uh, single germanium transistors. And um, you can already see it uh, here. <laughs> I have to get adjusted to left and right. Uh, it's um, the output is done uh, using moving coil ammeters and it counts up to a megahertz and more even it's incredible i'm going to show you the inside and how it works how to operate it what it does So here we've got it. Isn't it a beauty? Let's get the light right. It's the electronic counter type 9908-03 made by Van der Heem in the Netherlands. Where does it say so? Here, this plate here, Van der Heem. And these are all moving coil ammeters. And they display the frequency, which is kind of incredible, if you ask me. Um, here's the input. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to show you the insights. But first, I'm going to show you how you can um, count frequencies with this really remarkable thing. And um, we're going to compare it with um, this frequency counter up there which is also an old one, but that's from the 70s. And this one is from the 60s. Uh, that one is, by the way, up to, say, five digits accurate. And um, this one is quite accurate, too. It's got an uh, oven controlled crystal inside here. Um, so we're going to look at that. I've got it all hooked up and we're going to try to set up. This is a very simple oscillator between 10 kilohertz and 32 megahertz. This is a 32 megahertz counter made by RCS Electronics. Never heard of them, but it works. It sits now at 80 kilohertz, 80321. Um, I can adjust that with this knob. The frequency is now 23 kilohertz and 331 hertz. We're going to start it, press the button, and it ends 2, 3, 3, 2, 0. Oh, actually, that might be a 3. It's, this is the um, disadvantage of the moving coil meters. It can be a bit tricky to, to read them. There's adjustment screws here, but um, let's, let's give it another go. That's another frequency. Just put in a random value. 33587. Okay, it's a 33576, which might be 87. They're all a bit on the low side. Um, the funny thing is, you can adjust this thing. Let me show that right away in two ways. There's a set zero button here. If I press it, all the ammeters go back to zero. And they are at zero. Um, and you can adjust the zero setting by adjusting a little screw here on the side. It's, it's kind of tricky to get the screwdriver in for these things there. But if I move this to the left, then the, the pointer goes down. So best is to have it sit in the middle of the zero, I guess. Three, three, five, eight, seven. That is super. So we're going to try it at higher values now. Let's crank it up to, let's say, this is 116 kilohertz. One, one, three, six, five, one, four. One, one, six, five, one. Super accurate. It's incredible. Let's let's put it higher here. Three one six four three eight. 
316 kilohertz. 316605. 316605. Well, it's a bit off. Oh, but. <laughs> It's changing too. Let's try again. Three one six six one four. Three one six six one nine. Well, it's not bad, eh? Is it? We're going to uh, uh, up. Um, and we can go over a megahertz. One two seven. That's a bit on the high side, I think. Let's down down a little bit. I think he can do this one fit. One. Six four. Yeah, the the it's is it has a digit too few, but that can be overcome. Can put it in another uh, setting, and we'll drop a bit a uh, digit on the right. Uh, that was the wrong way. Going to do it again. Right there, we go again. One one six four six eight zero. One one six four six four three. That's good, isn't it? So this is uh, one megahertz, one point two seven seven megahertz, one two seven seven one two, one two seven seven one two zero. Let's crank it up a little bit, even a little bit more, even almost one and a half megahertz. One, two, one. Now, now he's lost. He's lost it. This frequency is too high. It's spec for one megacycles per second. So we can do this. One, two, eight, four, three, six, zero. So how does it actually? How can you operate the thing actually? Well, um, there's um. Let's start with the easy bits. Here on the bottom is this metal thing, and you can lift it up a little bit. Right, um, you get a glare from the camera, so I, I won't do this here in the upper uh, side. I'll put it back. Okay. Well, this is the on-off switch. Pretty obvious. This is choose between mains and battery. Six volt. DC input um, plus to ground minus here. There's a reset input here, and these are what what these things are. I don't know. There's a lot of connectors here. They're connected to the internals. We'll get to that later. This thing has an output also, which I will show how it works. There's an output connector here on the left. This um, there's a switch here. Now he outputs one kilohertz, one zero zero one. Um, I can switch between. This is a hundred hertz, ten hertz, one hertz, ten to the minus one even, and goes all the way up to ten to the sixth, one megahertz. There it is, one zero 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 two. 2 ppm actually, 2.5 ppm. The most important knob is this one here on the right. It has settings test on the very left, frequency, three different settings, period, three different, two different settings, time and count. So for frequency measurements, you have to choose one of the frequency settings, frequency times one. Let's see what happens. Um, let's uh, put this all back to where it was. 700 uh, megahertz, um, 70 something, 701, um, I can put it times 10 when you do that. Counts for 10 whole seconds, so the output which is displayed is going to be 
10 times as large. So we won't see the 7. The 7 is, is uh, overflown. So we see 0, 8, 6, 3, 2, 3. 0, 8, 6, something. And, and you can go the other way. In this way, he only counts for 100 milliseconds. So the output is much faster. So we see 7, 0, 8, 8, 2. 7, 0, 8, 8, 2. So we lose the, the last digit. So that's for the frequency. You can also use a period, uh, which measures the period of the um, of the input signal. Measure, and the output is nine zero, which is ninety microseconds. There's also a times ten setting, and then you get one digit more, one o. Oh, Four. Then there are also three other settings. There is a test and what test does it uh, sends a signal and it counts up to nine 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 and then it stops okay then there is time you have to press start here okay this works as a kind of stopwatch uh, with the start and stop buttons so you have to choose a unit time on this knob here. The time is connected to unit time here. So I have it now at 10 to the minus third. So it will feed one kilohertz uh, to the display from the moment you press start. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10 until stop and then it uh, remains fixed so you can do um, a time measurement and there are special start and stop inputs here which you can use to uh, to measure an event in a, in a laboratory or something then there is count um, which works in a similar way, but it's and it doesn't count from unit time here, but it counts from what I input here. So if I crank this up, it'll go faster. Frequency mode. So I'm now counting 32, no, 325 kilohertz, 325 983 not bad um, up to now I've always pressed the um, manual button to start account but you can also set it automatic and what that will do is it will start account which takes one second in this case and then it'll pause so you can read it up and the, the amount of pause can be adjusted by the display time knob I think that's everything there is to be said about this thing so now we're going to open the thing up and that's very well made. There we go. Whoa. 
Isn't that beautiful? The way it just can open and close, just like that, and all the guts are shown inside. So here we we see the back sides of the uh, moving coil meters. Um, here are all the four knobs and all the switches. One, two, three, four knobs. Switches here. Uh, in, uh, which one is input? This is input. This is output. Um, and it's all point-to-point -point wiring and some PCBs. Well, some PCBs. There's actually a lot of PCBs down here, which is all counting. You can see it here. Yeah, you can. I light it with my hand. So this thing. I can grab it out. It's easy. Cathode arm, miniature oven, type MCO2M, temperature 55 Celsius, volts 6 12. Cathodion Crystals Limited, Cambridge, England. Isn't it cute? The crystal is already here. Can you see it? Yeah, I guess so. This is the crystal. Well, it's just an old fashioned crystal, nothing special. It's right in this. There's a tuning cap there. It's a nice oven. What else is there to see? So actually I didn't have to repair very much on this uh, piece of equipment. Only um, the leftmost meter had the pointer was stuck. So I had to do a little bend and twist to get it working again. Let's finish off with some photographs. Here are the uh, the 26 pin connectors. One is positive logic, the other is negative logic. For the rest they are the same. A strange 1242 encoding. Here we see the inside with the uh, moving coil meters. The other side with all the logic panels. The uh, moving coil meter. And I've opened one up in order to repair it. Um, this picture is the uh, part of the power supply. Mm, here's some more pictures of the inside. Um, this is the uh, the oven and another shot. And this is one of the logic boards, which has a lot of transistors, all those OC44 transistors. Well, that's it. Thank you for watching.